Hi guys, this is Professor MJ, a statistics university professor from Canada. I'm here to teach you about an easy baseball betting system called the Stingy Pitchers. An easy system for easy money. Sounds easy, right? It is. to make more money passively by gambling on baseball? Hey, wait a minute. What am I doing on a football field while talking about baseball? Ow! Are you crazy, man? Yeah, you're right. I deserved it. Now, is this a more appropriate setting? Great. Now, let me do the talking and stop slapping me. I've posted several videos that unveil great betting strategies for you. Today, I'm going to cover the following case. When a Major League Baseball team allows very few runs over a stretch of consecutive games, should we bet them or should we bet against them? The results presented in this statistical study are based on historical data from the 2010 to 2016 Major League Baseball regular seasons. Every time I investigate a specific betting strategy, I like to determine what my initial intuition is before looking at the empirical results. I'm a contrarian, so I tend to go against the general public, simply because most of the time they are dead wrong. People prefer to bet the hot team. So in this situation, they would tend to put their money on the team that has allowed very few runs recently, whereas I would tend to fade them, which means to bet against them. So without further ado, let's see if the results are in accordance with my gut feeling or not. First, let's dig into the case of a two-game stretch. We have a team called Team A that not only won its previous two contests, but they won them by allowing very few runs in each. Suppose Team A shut out its last two opponents. What happened in their next game? Now, what if they won their previous two games, but this time by allowing a maximum of one run per game or two? Or three. All right, so the table that I'm about to show you provides the answer to those multiple questions. More specifically, we're going to pretend we've placed $1 bets on or against Team A after such two game stretches over the 2010 to 2016 Major League Baseball regular season. So the first column in this table shows you the maximum number of runs allowed in each of Team A's past two games. Now the next three columns show you the gambling outcome from betting Team A and the last three columns from betting against Team A. Now focus on the profit columns, both from betting or fading Team A. Let's face it, there is no fruitful strategy to be found in this table. Betting or fading Team A both yielded a losing outcome in terms of profit. Shall we give up right away? Of course not, because I still have some tools in my bag of tricks. Yeah, I know that's not really a tool, but that's the best I could find. The results I just showed you might be affected by whether Team A played on the road or at home. Who knows, we might find a viable system by splitting the profit figures depending on the location of the game. The top table shows you the results when Team A was the road team 
and the bottom table when they were the home team. So let's have a look. Hmm. I absolutely love what I'm seeing here. Not only do we now observe some profitable situations, but they are also in accordance with my initial hypothesis that claim we should bet against Team A. So, fading Team A when Team A was the visiting team turned out to be a good option when the maximum number of runs allowed in each of the previous two games was one or two. But let me focus on the case of a maximum of one run per game since the gains were greater despite a smaller sample size, which equates to a bigger return on investment. So let's call it strategy number one. Fading team A when on the road after it won two straight games by allowing a maximum of one run per match. In this case, we won $18.37 from 2010 to 2016. And as you can see, when team A played in front of its home crowd, betting or fading them lost money or led to negligible gains in all occurrences there is some light at the end of the tunnel after finding one prospective system in the previous section now did we make more money on favorites or underdogs i have broken down the money line on team a into 11 ranges of odds and let's see how strategy number one's $18 profit was obtained as a function of Team A's money line. Now, if you look at this table, clearly we want to stay away from games where Team A was a fairly big underdog. And since we are betting against them, we're going to avoid betting big favorites. Yes! So based on the evidence, I would recommend steering clear of games where Team A's money line was greater than 2.5. So we get a new and improved betting strategy that I'm going to call strategy number 1B, which is exactly the same as before. Fading Team A when on the road after it won two straight games by allowing a maximum of one run per game but we also want Team A's money line to be 2.5 or less. And in this case, our profit was $26.54 in our data set. One more obstacle before we officially accept the system described earlier, the season split. Basically, we want to assess if that system did well year in and year out based on past data. Did the $26.54 profit came from just one or two good seasons? Or did we observe consistent winnings across all years? Let's find out. Ooh, I can't say I'm thrilled with the results on your screen. Sure, we perceive five winning years versus only two losing ones but our bankroll suffered a pretty big blow from those two bad seasons. As a matter of fact, losing 11, 12 units is non-negligible. If you are a $100 gambler, that means $1,100 or $1,200 went up in flames, both in 2011 and 2015. Still, after further review, my lucky lobster bell suggests retaining this betting strategy for future use, even though it, it may not be the best performing one, nor the least risky. Let's move on to the three game stretch. We redo the same analysis, but this time we look at how Team A did after riding a three game stretch where they won all of them while allowing very few runs in each contest. Placing $1 bets 
after such three game stretches, yielded the following numbers over the 2010 to 2016 baseball seasons. Now, do you see anything exciting? I don't. We lost money in each scenario, except one where the gains were minor, with a ridiculous sample size of just 16 gains. So once again, we'll need to explore further for promising gambling system. It's time to break down the results, subject to the location of the game. I surrender. The highest profit figure from the couple of tables on your screen is $6.57. You have got to be kidding. I mean, think about it. Earning about 6 units through the course of 7 full seasons is trivial. That means we gain less than 1 unit per season. So put differently, if your average bet is say 50 bucks, you can expect to win less than 50 bucks over one full baseball season. So it's simply not worth the hassle or risk. Here comes the four game stretch section. The sample sizes will keep diminishing as we now require team A to have gone through a streak of four straight games where they won and they did not allow many runs in any of them. How did the strategies of either betting or fading Team A do after such four game stretches? Well, see for yourself. Nothing spectacular to be found. But there is hope, as we have some positive gains. The most gainful case seen in this table is about $4. So the gains are too small to be considered as a promising gambling system, but things may change once we scrutinize further. Why don't we split the results depending on whether Team A played on the road or at home? Yes, you guessed it, this is the good old road home split. We have a winner! <laughs> Let's call it strategy number two. Fading Team A when at home, after it won four straight games by allowing a maximum of three runs per match. And in this case, the profit over the seven full seasons of data was $15.86, over more than 300 games. So just like the first system that we retained earlier, we are betting against Team A which is in agreement with our initial intuition, so that's good news. Let's verify if we are better off betting the angle I just described on favorites or underdogs by breaking down the $15.86 profit across many ranges of odds. Pretty smart, right? I don't believe we can affirm there is a range of odds where this strategy did better. I mean, we won a significant amount of money in the very first range, where the odds were between 0 and 1.5. But two of the next three categories led to losses, so it would not be fair to claim that the system performed better when Team A was the favorite. So my conclusion is, the odds don't matter here. Shall we use this betting strategy in the future? The last hurdle is to show nice consistency from year to year in terms of profit. The numbers on your screen leave no doubt whatsoever. This betting system stinks. Three winning seasons versus four losing ones clearly does not fit the definition of good consistency. All of the previous sections in this study have required that Team A allowed very few runs in each of their past X games, while also having won all of those contests. But what if we remove the latter condition of having won all of those games? I'm going to omit the details in this video, but removing the winning requirement 
does not produce a good gambling system. If you would like to get proof of that and see all the details, I invite you to take a look at my blog post entitled The Stingy Pictures on my website at professormj.com. Good job, buddy, for making it this far in the video. Trust me, you'll be rewarded plenty with the stingy pictures angle. Now, here's a quick recap of the criteria that must be met for you to bet. Okay, so here is how the stingy pictures betting strategy actually works. So first, you have two criteria regarding the past two games of a team that we called Team A. They must have won both of those games by allowing a maximum of one run per game. Now there's also two criteria about Team A's next game. It must be on the road and their money line must be less than 2.5 in decimal format. If you are more familiar with American format, that means plus 150. So if that happens, you bet against Team A. Now, what was the performance of this system from 2010 to 2016? Well, I already showed you those numbers, so I'm not going to spend much time on them. But basically, you won, we would have won between 26 and 27 dollars by placing $1 bets. Now what about its future performance? What can you expect by using this system? Well, the expected profit per season is $3.79, still by placing $1 bets. But I'm sure that your average bet is not $1. So let's say it's $100. Well, you can expect to earn $379 per year. Now I'm aware it's not going to shake your world, so that's why you need to combine many such gambling systems together to make a significant impact on your revenues. And that's why I recommend that you watch my other betting strategy video. Alright, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed shooting it. Now, as a good professor, I've got just one homework for you. If you wish to thank me for unveiling this great winning system for free to you, you can either click the thumbs up button or subscribe to my channel or you can comment below. Do it now before you forget. Whoa, where are you going, man? It's just going to take a few seconds of your time while helping grow this great community of savvy sports investors like you. Many thanks to those of you taking action. This is Professor MJ. See you guys.